All right, and we're here. Uh, this is going to be very different from what I usually do. This is going to be me yapping about college football for, you know, I don't even know how long this is going to be, probably 15, 20 minutes. Um, I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. Got a lot of stuff to my left, got a lot of stuff to my right. So you're going to see me looking around here and here and not really looking at the camera. Got a lot of stuff written down, notes. You guys know how it goes. It's been a wild couple of weeks for college football. We've seen a lot of upsets. We're going to go through a lot of different games. Obviously, week zero, Florida State, Georgia Tech, the game winning field goal. It's really shocking how bad the Florida State offense was. Georgia Tech was much better than anticipated, um, even though they did suffer a loss in week two. It's not going to take away from how they've started the season. Moving on to theoretically week one, there was a lot of different FCS, FBS games. Western Carolina played NC State. They showed a lot of fight. Murray State took on Missouri. And as much as it pains me to say this, Eli Drinkwitz has done a great job building that program. Lindenwood took on Kansas. They showed a lot of fight in that game. Southern Utah took on Utah. Cam Rising is still that guy. Temple came into Norman. Wasn't really much of a game. Temple got smoked. Huge defense if they can continue to play the way they are. Going to be a difference for them in the SEC. And then we got to Saturday. Saturday week one, there was supposed to be some really good games. Clemson took on Georgia. Clemson's defense is good, but they have no help from that offense, or at least they didn't in that game. And it's not going to be easy to win tough games if they're on the field for 40 minutes. Georgia's still the cream of the crop. They're going to win the SEC. They're probably going to win the national championship. And if it's not them, we'll talk about some other teams later. But damn, they look good. Penn State, West Virginia. West Virginia still has a long way to go. Iowa against Illinois State. Their air raid offense was a spectacle. It was really weird to see them kind of slinging the rock. It looked good. Uh... Chattanooga, Tennessee. I mean, Nico's going to win the Heisman. He looks like he's going to be a stud. South Dakota State, Oklahoma State. Not really much to take away from this on the Oklahoma State side, but South Dakota State's going to be a problem in the FCS. Akron, Ohio State, Jeremiah Smith, the true freshman, an absolute stud. He's going to be the next great Ohio State receiver if he's not already. Colorado State, Texas. We got our first look at Arch Manning, and he he looked like a stud. He looked ready. He is behind Quinn Ewers. Barring an injury, he's not going to play much this year. Miami, Florida. I've never seen a QB look so relaxed in an entire game. Cam Ward was everywhere. Cam Ward barely broke a sweat. It was unreal. Western Kentucky, Alabama, I mean, the big takeaway from that is Ryan Williams. He is a problem. A 17-year-old. He should be in high school right now. He's a stud. He's going to be the next great Alabama receiver, and you got to watch out for him this year. Furman, Ole Miss, there's really not much to take away from this game. Ole Miss is just, I mean, they're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to be unreal this year. UT Martin, Kansas State, at the end of the day, the back from Colorado. He is a stud. That's, I mean, that's really all you need to know about him. Idaho, Oregon, I, I, you know, Oregon, they're going to be a team that's going to continue to get better. But at the end of the day, I think Idaho shows more about them. They're going to be a problem in the FCS. Right, this was a big one. Notre Dame, Texas A&M, the Notre Dame defense is legit. They were everywhere on Saturday night at the end. But also on the flip side, is Connor Weaving the guy? Is the Texas A&M offense bad? Or is the Notre Dame defense really just that good? I thought they had a chance to run the table before they ran into Northern Illinois. We'll get to more on that later. But yeah, that Texas A&M win was huge. Fresno State, Michigan, Michigan's offense is bad capital b bad we saw it against texas fresno state they struggled a lot against them it's going to be really tough unless davis warren continues to get better new mexico arizona tetaro mcmillan he's the best receiver in the country i i mean like i can't find someone who had a day like that i can't find someone with his skills as long as he's on the as long as he's on the field with fafita they're going to be a problem usc lsu kyron hudson obviously the catch of the year it was unreal in week one LSU's offense needs to improve if they want to compete for a playoff berth. At the end of the day, they got stopped way too much by USC's defense, and they were beating themselves. But, I mean, I think this says a little more about USC. They're going to compete for a Big Ten title. Are they going to win it? Probably not. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think they're going to be a top-five team in the Big Ten. Maybe even top three. Boston College, Florida State. More on Florida State, man. 300 yard rushing yards for Boston College. Giving that up is unreal. Like, that's ridiculous. Florida State, they have a bye after this. They need it. They need a big reset right now. But Boston College, they're a sneaky ACC contender. It's a very good team. They have a very light schedule. They have a chance, to, not necessarily to run the table, but they definitely have a chance to win the ACC. Going into week two, we're going to start with Duke Northwestern. Northwestern, they blew this game so many times. Duke tried to lose this game at every turn. Northwestern grabbed defeat from the jaws of victory. It was so unacceptable. Texas-Michigan, this was supposed to be a fantastic game. Michigan's defense is good, right? They're going to get a lot of flack for around 30 points, but they can't do everything. Same thing I said about Clemson. If they're out there for 36, 40 minutes a game, it's going to be really tough for them to win the game. Quinn Ewers, I mean, shit, man. He's that guy. Texas is going to be run in the running for the number one overall seed. They're a great team. Bowling Green, Penn State, there's really not much to say. Bowling Green competed their hearts out, but Penn State needs to figure it out. They're super inconsistent right now. Arkansas, Oklahoma, I mean, the Arkansas, Oklahoma State game, Arkansas, they're just definitively, they're the definition of shooting yourself in the foot. That was, Oklahoma State tried to lose that game every time, and it was just unreal. Kansas State, Tulane, don't really think this says too much about Kansas State, Tulane, they're just going to win the American. They're a great group of five teams. They're one of the best group of five teams in the country. Yeah, we have some really good group of five teams. You know, Boise State, we're going to get more on them later. Tulane, we have Northern Illinois. It's going to be a really fun year. Georgia Tech, Syracuse. Syracuse obviously upsets Georgia Tech. Kyle McCord was a fantastic get for the Orange. Georgia Tech needs to continue to improve defensively under Brent Key. But again, Syracuse, a really light schedule. I think they're going to compete for the ACC title. 
Tennessee Tech, Georgia, not much to say about it. They're a well oiled machine. It was a tune up. I mean, no, no need to go put up 70 when you know how good you really are. Northern Illinois, Notre Dame. I mean, Northern Illinois' defense and special teams showed out time and time again in South Bend. Notre Dame's offense needs to get better fast. After Texas A&M, we said that, but they were even worse this week at home against a group of five MAC team. But I think Northern Illinois is going to win the MAC. I think they're a great team. I think they're much better than people realized, and they have a chance to run the table. Baylor, Utah, I mean, not much to say from this game. Utah was handily winning this game before Cam Rising got hurt. He got, has to stay healthy. He's 25. Like, he can't be taking the hits that he was. Iowa State, Iowa. I mean, Iowa State's ability to win that game ugly, coming back on the road, so underrated. They're a good team. They're a lot better than people realize. Iowa continues to need to improve offensively. It's funny that when Kirk Ferentz comes back, they don't know how to play offense again. Very interesting. But again, Iowa State, I think they're a team that's going to continue to improve, and I think they have a chance to win the Big 12. Jacksonville State, Louisville. I don't think this says much about Louisville, but Tyler Huff for Jacksonville State, he's going to be a problem for Conference USA. He runs through a motherfucker's face. He's a stud. MTSU Ole Miss, I mean, not again, not much to say from this. Ole Miss is going to be a playoff team. They're fantastic. Florida a and Miami, I mean, Miami's good, man. They're, they they seem like they're back. They play a really light ACC schedule. It's going to be a dangerous year from the Canes. South Florida, Alabama, Wilkin Formby is not ready yet. They need Caden Proctor back. That's the big takeaway. As soon as he got off the field, the Alabama offense started to hum. They ran the ball much better. Buffalo, Missouri, there's not much to say. Missouri's fucking loaded. And it pains me to say that shit. It pains me to talk positively about Missouri or Kansas State, but I have to. Kansas, Illinois, Kansas play call was fucking terrible. Devin Neal, seven and a half yards per carry. He gets the ball 14 times. Inexcusable. Illinois defense, I do want to give them credit. They're flying around. Flying around. But Kansas, they have UNLV on Friday. They have a short week. They need to regroup ASAP or they're going to be in real trouble. Western Michigan, Ohio State. I mean, shit. Ohio State's going to win a national championship, bro. They're so fucking good. It's unreal. I know I said Georgia's, but there are some teams in the Big Ten of the SEC that I rave about, and they're just so good. Tennessee, NC State. Tennessee can score in a hurry. Just like the offense two years ago with Hendon Hooker, Heupel's got another stud in Nico. NC State, they need to improve defensively. We saw what happened when the wheels came off, especially when their defense was relied on. Tennessee, they're another team. I think they can compete for the SEC title. I know that's a very basic general observation, but they're really good. Nichols, LSU, LSU's defense has to get better ASAP. That's, I mean, that's really simple. Allowing 21 points to that team is inexcusable. Houston, Oklahoma, this one's pretty easy. If their offense doesn't get better, their season's going to be rocky. They have probably the toughest schedule in the country if it's not Florida's. App State, Clemson. I mean, Clemson looked much better. App State's a good group of five team, and they throttled them. Boise State, Oregon. Oregon special teams saved that day. A punt return and a kick return for a touchdown. I know Whittingham dropped it, but at the end of the day, they did score on that play. The Ducks look really shaky so far. Northern Arizona, Arizona. I don't really know how much this says about Arizona. They probably looked past this game because they have Kansas State on a short week. This week, Northern Arizona, they're going to win the big sky. I mean, they're going to compete really hard. They're a great team. And finally, Utah State, USC. Utah State... Got shut out. USC's defense is much improved. The Trojans look at real contenders in the Big Ten. Now I'm going to talk about the top 25 teams. Uh, I'm just going to go over a little summary about each one of them in case you don't know them. Northern Illinois, they're going to go, to me, we're going to do some record predictions as well. Number 25, Northern Illinois. I think they're going to go 12-0. I think they're going to win the MAC, and I think they're going to make the playoffs as the Group of Five Conference champions. At the end of the day, this team has played the toughest teams they'll have to play. They have a pretty favorable schedule going forward. They do have some action games. It'll be fun. You never know what's going to happen, but I think that they can really run the tape. Boston College, number 24. I think they go 10-2. and two. They play this week at Missouri. I think they lose that game. I'm really high on the Tigers as much as it fucking pains me to say that. They're also going to play Louisville. I think Louisville's the real deal. They're going to lose that one, but I still think they're going to compete for the ACC championship game. Nebraska ranked for the first time in a while. I think they're going to go 10-2. and two. They do play a really easy first half of the schedule, but I think they go... When they take on Ohio State, I think they lose that game. And then I think they lose to USC. I know that's not going to be an easy game either. The back half of their schedule is really tough. But even so, 10-2 and two for Nebraska. If you said that at the beginning of this year, people would be through the roof. Clemson, I think they're going to go 10-2. I think they've already lost their one game to Georgia. I think they're going to lose to Louisville. Obviously, Barrett Carter and uh, Peter Woods leading this defense. They're fantastic players. The offense team's improved, especially after the App State game, but we're going to have to see how it holds up. Iowa State, I think they go 10-2. and two. I think they're going to play Utah, and they're going to play Kansas State, and I don't think they win either of those games. But at the end of the day, the final two games, that's their final two games of the season. They could go 10-0 and 0 in that stretch, and, you know, who knows? But if they win those, if those final two games are going to determine if they're legit or not. Arizona, they play Kansas State this week, and they're going to play Utah next week. I think they lose both those games. They fall to 2-2. Two two. They probably fall out of the rankings. At the end of the day, the back half of their schedule is really easy. I think they rattle off eight straight wins. I mean, Tetra Roa, McMillan, Takario Davis, Jonas Savanea, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's the right tackle. They're a really good team, especially on offense. The defense seems improved, but we're going to have to see how it holds up. At number 19, Louisville, though, I think they're going to go 10 and 2. I know Notre Dame just lost, and I know they're probably a laughing stock, but I think Notre Dame is going to beat Louisville. I also think Louisville are going to lose to Miami. Miami's a great team. Louisville's defense between Quincy Riley and Ashton Gillow, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's their left end. Um, 
Defensively, I think they're going to be fine, but I just think offensively it's going to be a question mark. We're going to have to see how Tyler Shock does. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Shock Show. I'm, I'm really bad with it. I've heard it on the broadcast, but I've just never got it right. Notre Dame. I know they just suffered a major loss, but they have a really easy schedule. I think they're going to lose to USD. I think they go 10-2. and two. Defensively, between Benjamin Morris, Xavier Watts, Howard Cross, they do have a weapon in Mitchell Evans. They're good. They just have to make sure they can continue to play to the level they know they can, but they have to improve offensively. Michigan, at the end, of, they have a really tough schedule, right? They lost to Texas. They're going to play USC, Oregon, and Ohio State. I don't think they win any of those games at the end of the day. Defensively, between Will Johnson, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, offensively, they have Colson Loveland and Donovan Edwards. The problem is the quarterback position. How is that going to play out? If they want to compete for a playoff spot for a Big Ten title, the offense has to get better. LSU, I think they're going to go eight and four. They lost to USC in a game I did not expect them to lose. They play Ole Miss, Alabama, and Oklahoma. I know they play all three of them at home. I don't think they win any of those games. I really don't. So that puts them, for me, at 8-4. and four. They have a lot of studs on offense between Will Campbell, Emory Jones, Mason Taylor. They do have Harold Perkins as well. But the defense has to get better. Allowing 21 points to Nichols is unreal. That's inexcusable. Oklahoma. At the end of the day, if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan, if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan, I'm sorry for what I'm about to tell you. I think they go 7-5. and five. And I, I think it's just such a tough schedule. I don't think it has anything to do with my thoughts on Oklahoma. You play Tennessee, you play Texas, you play Ole Miss, you play Missouri, you play Alabama. You do get a couple of those at home, but are you really going to tell me that Jackson Auto is going to beat Alabama? I know you have to go to Missouri. That's not going to be an easy game. You, Ole Miss is not going to be easy. Texas, the Red River rivalry, you know, you can swing that one. Tennessee, you get at home, but I think Nico's a monster. I don't think this team is 7-5 and five bad, but I just don't think they're 9-3 and three or 10-2 and two good especially with this schedule. Obviously, the defense, Danny Stutzman, Billy Bowman, you have some studs there, but offensively, we haven't seen anything. Jackson Arnold is 2-1 in his career. The Temple game, they outmatched them, but Houston, the first power four team they played this year, they put up 16 points at home. And Houston's going to, they're not going to, they're going to win like two games in the Big 12, maybe. So it's like, how good is this team really? The offense, to me, is a major question mark. I have to see it. At number 14, Kansas State. I think they're going to go 11-1. I think they're going to lose to Oklahoma State. I think they're going to compete for a Big 12 title. I think there's a couple teams between Utah, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. They're all going to compete for the Big 12 title. And it's going to be a really fun race down the stretch. Speaking of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State, I think they go 11-1. I think they lose to Utah. I think there's, I think they're really good on both sides of the ball. Obviously, Ali Gordon's the premier back in the country. They have middle linebacker Nick Martin. But the team needs to get more consistent on both sides, especially offensively. They did not deserve to beat Arkansas. I'll say it. Speaking of Utah, I think they run the table. I think they, I mean, offensively led by Cam Rising, they do have tight end Brent Kuth. There are studs on that offense. Defense is the question mark. Can they hold up against the explosive offenses in the Big 12? If they can, they run the table. Number 11, USC. You know, I had a lot of question marks about this team, but I think this is a team that can go 11-1. and one. Michigan's not as good as they are. They don't play Ohio State or Oregon. At the end of the day, I think their only loss comes to Penn State. They have a really revamped offensive line behind Jonah Monheim. The defense needs to continue to play at the level it has been, but damn, I think they're great. Next up, we got Miami. Miami plays a really, really easy schedule. Florida State, not as good as we thought they were going to be. Um, the ACC, wide open. Obviously, offensively, Damian Martinez, Xavier Restrepo on defense. They have Ruben Bain Jr. This team has the pieces to go undefeated. I think they're going to run the table. Can they avoid a letdown? That's been the big key with Miami going forward and has been in the past. They can do it. I think they run the table in the ACC. All right, next up, number nine, we have Oregon. This is another team. I think they go 11-1. and one. They have a really tough schedule, but I think they can navigate it outside of the loss to Ohio State. I know they have it at home, but I don't think Oregon's been consistent at all, and I think Ohio State has looked amazing so far. Obviously, offensively, Dylan Gabriel, Tess Johnson, Evan Stewart, left tackle Josh Connerly. Defensively led by Jabbar Muhammad, but the defense, we need to see it hold up against the rest of the Big Ten. They haven't played a conference game yet, so it'll be interesting to see how that is in a couple weeks. Penn State, another team, they play a kind of lighter schedule. I think they go 11-1, their only loss again to Ohio State. Both sides of the ball, Kevin Winston, Abdul Carter, Nick Singleton, Tyler Warren, they got some studs on either side. They just need to be more consistent. In the two games against West Virginia and Bowling Green, they haven't really shown consistency at all on either side. Tennessee, even though this is technically a higher-ranked team, I think they go 10-2. and two, right? They play Alabama and Georgia. I don't think they're ready to be either of those teams. Defensively, obviously, led by James Pius Jr., one of the best players in the country. The offense has played well, but we have to see it against real competition. NC State was kind of that, but I kind of think NC State is a bunch of frauds, so we'll see. Missouri. I think this is a team that they go, unfortunately, 11-1. and one. I think they lose to Alabama, but other than that, they have a pretty light schedule. This is a team that's probably going to be a high playoff seed. Luther Burden, an absolute stud. The defense, however, is the question mark. If they can play up to standard, they're going to be a top-10 team. Ole Miss. I think this is a team that go 11-1. They have a tough schedule. They had a really tough schedule, but I think they can navigate it outside of the Georgia game. Obviously, Jackson, Trey Harris on offense, Walter Nolan on defense, but at the end of the day, we just need to see the defense play against high-level comp. They've played nobody so far, so we haven't really gotten any information on it. Alabama, 
This is a team number four in the country. I think they go 11 to one. They play Georgia. I think Georgia is probably the undisputed best team in the country. Even though saying that Alabama, they have a really they really loaded offensive line. Parker Brails for Jaden Roberts, Tyler Booker. They obviously have Jalen Milrow. Defensively, Deontay Lawson and Malachi Moore. This is a team that's improved defensively and they played really well so far. We just need to see them play against high level comp. And the offense has to get more consistent. Losing Caden Proctor against South Florida was a huge loss for them. He has to get healthy. Ohio State, this is a team I think they're on the table. I think they win the Big Ten. I think they go undefeated. They have a really tough schedule. They go two, or they have to play Penn State, Michigan. But at the end of the day, this team is fucking loaded. Running back alone, Travion Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins. They have Emeka Ibuka. They have Donovan Jackson on the offensive line. Defensively, Caleb Downs, Jack Sawyer, Tylee Williams, Denzel Burke. I mean, they're loaded. Can they avoid disappointment? That's the question. Texas, this is a team, I think they're going to go 11-1. They have a really tough schedule, but they, they should be able to manage most of it. They play Georgia. They do have Georgia at home, but I still think they lose that game. They have, obviously, Quinn Ewers. Left tackle Kelvin Banks is an absolute monster, the best tackle in football. The defense is a question mark. We'll kind of see how they have to hold up against the SEC teams. And finally, the number one team in the country, Georgia. Obviously, I think they run the table. They're probably my national championship contender. They're probably my national championship pick. I mean, offensively, they have a Tate Radledge and Dylan Fairchild. Carson Beck's a great quarterback. Oscar Delp is a stud. Defensively, Michael Williams, Malachi Starks, they're loaded. Can they avoid a letdown, and can they go for three titles in four years? That's the question. And finally, we're going to look at some games to look forward to. Obviously, this coming up week is week three. Friday, Arizona plays Kansas State. This is technically a non-conference game, but it's going to be a huge indicator to see who's real and who's not. Arizona has to go to the Little Apple. I want Arizona to win that game, but I don't think they will. I think Avery Johnson has a coming out party on national TV. I think Kansas State wins 38-31. Boston College goes to Missouri. Another, this is on Saturday. This is another non-conference game. This is definitely not a game I expected to be covering as, as the game of the week. Objectively, this is a game of the week. Um, kind of a Kind of a dull week, but... It is what it is. At the end of the day, Boston College must Im much improved. Thomas Castellanos, we're going to have to see how good he really is. He's going to get a chance to play in Columbia. Again, as much as I want Missouri to fucking lose. I think they're going to be Boston College like 38 to 24. Week four, Illinois plays Nebraska. Nebraska is surprising everybody, and I haven't seen Nebraska really at all this year outside of highlights. I'm going to be excited. They play Friday night. I think this is Nebraska's first Friday night game in God knows how long. Um, I think Illinois gets ran over by Nebraska. I think this is like a, a 42 to 24 game. Tennessee, Oklahoma. This is going to be the game of the week. This is going to be an incredible game. Oklahoma, they're a good team. Jackson Arnold hasn't really played terrible. He's played okay. He's got to play better against Tennessee. I think this is a game that Tennessee can come in and win 31-24 on the road, but don't be surprised if Oklahoma wins this game. USC, Michigan. This is another one I didn't expect to be to see USC be the one that was favored. Even though they're playing in the big house, I think USC can come into Ann Arbor and take down the Wolverines. I think this is a lower scoring game, maybe like 31 to 20, 31 to 17. But yeah, I think USC comes in and wins that game. Finally, for week four, we have number 12 Utah against number 13 Oklahoma State. The cream of the crop in the Big 12. Um, I think Utah comes in, pulls out a win. If Cam Rising isn't healthy, they lose that game. But I think this is a game. I think this could be a shootout. I think we could see like a 45 to 39, uh, like an explosive ass game. Going into week five, we're only going to go this far because there are some games here I want to touch on. Virginia Tech, number 10 Miami. Prime time, Friday night on ESPN. This is going to be a really important game. Virginia Tech kind of slept on. They're going to come down to Miami. This is Miami's really first letdown game. This is If, if Cam Moore doesn't take care of business here, the season could unravel. Then on Saturday, number 20 Arizona takes on number 12 Utah. A brutal two, three weeks for it. A brutal two weeks for Utah. Nope. Yeah. A brutal two weeks for Utah. However, if Cam Rising is healthy. They get this one at home. Two former Pac-12 teams. I think Utah takes care of them like 35 to 21. I think Utah's defense is legit. The Big 12 showdown, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. A lot of the great matchups in the Big 12 are early in the season. I think Oklahoma State pulls us out on the road. I think Ollie Gordon's going to be a huge difference maker in this game. The Kansas State team hasn't really shown they can stop anybody. Tulane played pretty well up until like the third, fourth quarter. I think Oklahoma State's going to have a field day. I think this is another 38 30, no, I think we're going to go 35-28, Oklahoma State. And finally, Georgia, Alabama. This is this might be the game of the year. Like, objectively, this might be the game of the year. In Tuscaloosa, Georgia has to come to Bama for the first time in, I believe, almost a decade. I know they played in 2020, but the crowd was different. You know how that stuff goes. I think Georgia pulls this one off, but I think this is a slugfest. I could see this being 28-24, 24-21. I mean, this is going to be a hell of a game. I think Georgia's going to win it. And yeah. Uh, I know this is something super different. I just kind of wanted to do it, see how it felt, see how it does. Um, I love talking college football. I watch a ridiculous amount of college football. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see me do this again, make sure to comment down below. Um, and you, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.